I'm Jason Epperson. This is RV Miles, and it's time for the latest in RV and camping news. Well, America's national parks have been implementing timed entry permits over the busy season for the past few years in experiments designed to ease congestion when parking lots fill. Arches National Park has always been one of the most challenging parks to get into, filling up to the point of closure more than 100 days per year. Arches seasonal timed entry ended on October 4th, and since the park has been very busy, often closed by 10 a.m. to new visitors. Timed entry lotteries have existed in many forums at Rocky Mountain, Zion, Yosemite, and Glacier National Parks and more, and some lawmakers are wondering if we should send veterans to the front of the line. Congressmen Ben Klein and Chris Pappas are leading a bipartisan effort to encourage the National Park Service to reserve spots for active duty military, Gold Star families, and veterans to enter lottery systems via a letter to National Park Service Director Chuck Sams. Lottery systems are not only used for park entry, they're often used for access to popular trails and tours. The letter was co-signed by 22 other members of the House of Representatives. It reads in part, Last year, Congress passed legislation providing free annual America the Beautiful passes for active duty personnel and free lifetime passes for Gold Star families and veterans. These women and men who serve our country stand as heroes for all Americans. This is a small change, but would have a positive impact on all active duty military, Gold Star families and veterans. About 7% of American adults are veterans. Class B camper vans are the hottest segment of the RV market, bucking the slowing sales trend that began this past spring. They're mostly built on three chassis, the Mercedes Sprinter, the Ram Promaster, and the Ford Transit. Well, for 2023, Ford has something new up its sleeves. Ford Pro CEO Ted Canis announced on Twitter that the Transit lineup is expanding for the 2023 model year. Next month, Ford Pro will introduce the new 2023 Transit Trail Van, which Ford vaguely said will be equipped with new adventure-seeking capability alongside interior and exterior enhancements that are aimed at providing do-it-yourselfers and RV manufacturers a turnkey canvas to build upon direct from the factory. There's been a UK version of the Transit Trail for a few years, but it's unclear what, if any, features will be brought over. The teaser video shows some knobby tires, but not much else. The full announcement is expected in November November. Transit Trail will be assembled in the Kansas City Assembly Plant alongside Transit and E-Transit vans. Up next, Starlink RV Internet hits a milestone, but first, this week's news video is supported by Kamikoto Knives. Fall is here, and if you've been around RV miles long enough, you know I love making chili, and today I made some epic chili using the three-piece Kamikoto knife set made with high-quality Japanese steel using traditional techniques. Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. The knives come in a heavy-duty ash wood box, which makes it a great present for the upcoming holiday season. They're used by Michelin star chefs all over the world, Kamikoto is offering our viewers an extra $50 off any purchase with discount code RVMILES, all one word. You can go to kamikoto.com slash RVMILES and then use the code RVMILES to get $50 off some truly fantastic Japanese steel knives. We'll put a link in the description. SpaceX has announced on Twitter that it now has more than 100,000 subscribers to its Starlink RV internet service. That's up from 30,000 just four months ago. Starlink RV is available without a waiting list, unlike the residential version, but can see lower speeds and periods of peak congestion. That immediate availability means a lot of the Starlink RV subscribers are not actually RVers. And in fact, Elon Musk hinted at a possible name change, saying that it's basically just Starlink with roaming capability, so you can take your terminal anywhere. In the past few months, Starlink speeds have decreased across the US, likely due to network congestion from too many users accessing the network and RV users are taking the brunt of it, often with unusable speeds in the evenings. But in total, Starlink boasts over 700,000 customers worldwide, and another 700 customers remain on the wait list. Chaffee County, Colorado this week approved a private land camping ordinance that is being called groundbreaking. It provides rural landowners with an accessible, clear, cost-effective, and legal path to hosting small-scale commercial camping on private property. HipCamp, the booking platform that provides access to private lands, partnered closely with farmers and ranchers across the county to advocate for the change. HipCamp says that private land camping provides a much needed additional revenue stream for hundreds of farmers and ranchers across the state of Colorado who have been impacted by increasing drought, low commodity prices, and historically high production costs. New hip camp listings in Colorado have grown by 265% since 2019, with demand for bookings growing 200% 
202% during the same period. Hip Camp host Monica Courtney began welcoming tent campers, glampers, and RVers onto her 40-acre historic ranch and animal sanctuary in 2017. Since then, she's hosted hundreds of campers and has used the earnings to supplement the cost of running the sanctuary. Her local community has benefited too. Hip campers visiting the sanctuary listing drove an estimated $235,000 in revenue to neighboring businesses during the past five years. Quote, hosting campers is good for the welfare of our animals, good for the land, and healing for everyone who comes to Thunderbird Spirit Ranch. This new ordinance is common sense and cost effective and will benefit rural folks like myself who have to sustain our farms and do the demanding work required to help our lands and animals thrive. We've reported on incidents in the past where hip camp hosts have been shut down by municipalities for essentially operating an unlicensed campground that doesn't meet codes and zoning ordinances. It seems hip camp is getting proactive about making sure that small scale private land camping can be done in a responsible way. They say that they look forward to partnering with other state and local lawmakers to promote agritourism opportunities in rural communities across the nation. Lippert Components has announced a new anti-lock braking system for electric trailer brakes. Lippert says the system works with the trailer brakes to prevent wheel lockup and enhance control over the vehicle trailer combination, particularly in slippery or abrupt braking situations. When the driver encounters an emergency braking situation, instead of the trailer fishtailing off to one side and pulling the vehicle into a dangerous drift, the Lippert ABS system should help the driver maintain control and assist in bringing the vehicle and trailer safely to a stop. It's prepped to work with Lippert's One Control app so it can be paired with the driver's phone to monitor speed, status, and more. The system also operates independently from the vehicle's brake controller. It's not available for aftermarket installation at this time, but you will see anti-lock brakes on 2023 Grand Design RVs under Lippert's Kurt nameplate. Currently, Grand Design's Solitude, Reflection, and Momentum are the only RVs on the market with ABS. The new ABS package utilizes the Kurt Axle platform, which features upgraded suspension, forward self-adjusting brakes, and greasable wet bolts, as well as upgraded heavy-duty hardware. Grand Design says the ABS system with Kurt Axles has been thoroughly tested in wet, icy and regular simulations, as well as in live icy conditions. All testing results have demonstrated increased braking performance, though no specifics are available. According to Bloomberg Law, Marcus Limonis, CEO of the nation's largest RV dealership chain Camping World, along with other Camping World board members, won an appeal freeing them from insider trading litigation after their investors claimed that they sold tens of millions of dollars worth of stock while hiding problems during the acquisition of the Gander Mountain chain of retail stores. The judge dropped the case because the investors failed to request a board investigation first, which is usually a prerequisite to filing a shareholder directly derivative lawsuit. Camping World bought many of bankrupt sporting goods retailer Gander Mountain Company's assets in 2017. The lawsuit accused the board of looking the other way and concealing delays in the reopening of former Gander stores while stocks were being sold off. Many of Camping World's Gander stores have since closed or rebranded, but some of them still exist. Finally, a concerned DeSoto County, Florida resident called the Sheriff's Department to report a dog who was stranded on the roof of an RV after Hurricane Ian. The dog survived nine days on the roof in the River Acres community, one of many areas severely impacted by flooding. Thankfully, the DeSoto County Sheriff's Office was able to mobilize a boat and rescue the dog, and it was turned over to Animal Control, where it now has access to water, food, and shelter. That's it for this week's RV and Camping News Roundup. Please hit the like button if you got something out of this video and sub for more. We'll see you next time.